Alright guys, I'm going to do my best to show you guys how the geometry of an IFS system works. Um, mind you, I'm looking at my phone screen and not the page because it's kind of in the way. So, here goes nothing. Step one, you're going to note four points. Do my best to do this here. This is your lower control arm mount this is your UCA mount this is your upper ball joint and your lower ball joint now we'll make an imaginary line here through here and this one I'm going to have to probably do without looking at the screen so here we go okay notice I made a super long line here this point here is absolute center super important okay so upper control arm mount lower control arm mount ball joint upper ball joint your suspension is going to be traveling like this okay just to give you representation now, this would be the kingpin angle this is set on our trucks, I think, at 12 degrees, if I remember correctly. This one um, is going to be different on the Z85s and Z71s, I know, for a fact that's different. Um, off of absolute center, these points always point to this point, no matter what. So... Now that we know the upper, lower, on the Colorados, the tie rod's in the middle, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line arbitrarily somewhere in the middle. Now, in order to have no bump steer, the distance from where this line intersects here and here has to be perfect. Um, has to be in the intersection of the axes for the ball joints and the upper mounts. That's my puppy. He's whining because they're waiting for mom. Shut up. Lay down. You're ruining the video. Back to it. So, the points need to be maintained. This is why I could easily have the same effect and draw this line clear out here doesn't matter. It's not going to be upper, below, whatever. The fact remains that it has to intersect these axes here. If it, if it mounts under and it mounts here and here, that distance has to be maintained so long as the tie rod mount is in line with the axes here and the axes here. Now this can be slid to here and here, scooted however far. Like I know our trucks, the kingpin angles here yet our tie rods are out a little bit. You can move that so long as the distance from axis to axis intersection is the same. So this is on our trucks I think somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 or 14 inches. It would have to be maintained 13 or 14 inches here. Um, so that's kind of what I tried to explain in this last post or two back. Um, stop it. Um, but in order to get this perfect, our truck's perfect, you have to check this. Um, you know, in this thread, we've been talking about these guys uh, trying to make stuff work. Uh, so far, I've only been, been the only one to figure out how to make the CST lift work on the Z71 Colorado two-wheel drive. The reason being, I found this drawing on a website, and I cannot find it again. I don't know where it is. I got my laptop stolen so I don't have it saved anymore. 
So, I will try to find it for you guys, but in the meantime, this is about all you got. So, to reiterate, upper control arms here, lower control arms here, tie rods here. Your mounts, your chassis on the car ought to be somewhere in this area. Mounts lower on this, the stock subframe, uh, upper mount where the shot goes, upper ball joint, lower ball joint, tie rod somewhere in the middle. Absolute center. That is of utmost importance. Hope that helps.